Hello folks, in this video I'm going to continue working on Flappy Bird in Pygame. So last time I added in these pipes and I've added in a little bit of randomness to it to how high up they're generated and I've even got the collision working as well so when a bird hits them it dies and it's game over. So what I want to add in now is a score counter. At the moment there's no way of telling how many pipes you've actually passed through. So I'm going to add that in now. But first of all, I just want to explain what it is uh, and the approach that I'm going to be taking, because it's not as straightforward as it first seems. So to be able to check whether or not I've passed through a pipe, if you imagine that there's a couple of lines projected from the left-hand side to the right-hand side of the pipe, they're going to act as my essential zone. So this orange line is marking off when the bird first enters the pipe. So once the bird has gone past this orange line, it means that it's within this area above the pipe. Then I can look for whether it's past the green line, at which point that means that the bird has successfully made its passage above this pipe completely, it hasn't collided, and that means I can increase the score by one. So that means that I need a way of monitoring where the bird is relative to this pipe. So I will use a trigger for this. If the pipe has gone past this orange line, I will set this trigger to true, because that means that the bird is within this zone. Then, as long as that trigger is true, if the bird has then passed the green line, that means that it's made a successful journey all the way through and I can set the score counter up by one and then I can set the trigger back to false so that you can check the next pipe along. The reason it has to be done like this is because you're going to have more than one pipe on the screen. So you can't simply say, well, if the bird has passed the right hand side of pipe rectangle, then add one to the score. Because then it's just going to keep checking this all the time and your score is just going to keep shooting up as long as the bird is to the right hand side of any pipe. So you need to be able to isolate a particular pipe and a particular bird. In this case there's only one bird but the code still has to be the same way. So with that kind of explained I'll start coding it and hopefully it makes a bit more sense. So we need to define a couple more variables. The first one is score. Score is going to be zero. The second one is that trigger. So this is called pass pipe and I'll start off with this being set to false. It's going to be a boolean so I'll only ever set it to true or false. Now with these defined I can come into my main game loop and start actually handling this uh, score check. So just below where I'm drawing all of the um, all of the groups and on the ground, but above where I'm checking for collision, I'll add a new section and I'll say check the score. So first of all, I don't want to be trying to do this when there aren't any pipes generated yet. So if I try and do this too early, uh, then it's going to give me an error because there aren't any pipes on the screen and I'm trying to look for pipe uh, coordinates. So I just want to make sure that there's something within the pipe group first of all. And that's done by checking the length of it. So len pipe group, as long as this is greater than zero, that means that some pipes have been created. So I can start doing my checks. So remember, the first check is whether that sprite has passed this position. So I look for the left-hand side of this particular sprite. So there's a way of accessing sprites from groups. If you remember, all of these sprites individually are added into either the bird group or the pipe group. So the bird group only has one sprite in it, but the pipe group is going to have many. So I need to be able to access a particular one. I don't want just any of them. I don't want to look for all of the pipes. I want to look for that particular one that the bird is about to pass through. So these, as I mentioned before, these are like lists. They kind of share a lot of the same um, characteristics. So they also have an index. So for example, when I'm checking the length of that pipe group, it's given me the amount of uh, values within this, well, within this group, but I can access each individual one in the same way as I would with a list by just adding an index in square brackets. So that means that I can look for particular checks. So I'm going to say, first of all, if bird group sprites, and this is where I add in the index. Well, my bird group only has the single, uh, well, yeah, the single bird. So the index is always zero. So that's the first item within the group, which is just the bird. So if the left-hand side of that rectangle has gone past and I'll bring this image back up again. So if this left-hand side has gone past this orange line, which is the left-hand side of this pipe, but remember, this is the, the very first pipe that's been generated on the screen. So it's the first pipe within that group. So I could use the same line here, pipe group dot sprites, and I need to make sure to access the first instance, which is the, the index zero. Rec dot left. So if the bird has gone past that line, but the bird has not gone past the green line yet. I'm only looking for it when it's entered this zone. So I need to do the exact same checks, but for this green line. And uh, this code is going to get very long, so I'll split it by adding a, backs uh, a backslash here. 
that's going to allow me to just split the code over another line. So I say and, and I can actually just copy this down and just tweak it a little bit. So now I'm looking for the right hand side, okay, of the exact same sprites and the same instances, but it's the right hand side. So right, and it has to be less than. So by saying greater than the left hand side, but less than the right hand side of the pipe, I'm essentially saying is the bird within this zone. And the last check I need to do is, and pass pipe is false, which is that trigger. Well, if all of that is met, then let's set that trigger to true. So pass pipe becomes true. Now I can do the second phase of that check. Now that I know that the, the, uh, the bird is within this area, all I need to do is check whether it's past this green line. So I do that in more or less the same way. First of all, I say, is pass pipe true? So pass pipe equals true. If that's the case, and as long as that's the case, let's look for the bird leaving that zone. So I just use the same code from up here again, just copy this down. So now I'm saying if the bird uh, rectangle left hand side is greater than the pipe rectangle right hand side, which remember is now this green line. So if the left hand side of the bird has exceeded and gone past this green bit, then that means that the bird has exited the pipe. So finally, after all of that, I can increase the score by one. And of course, I need to remember to reset this trigger. So I'll say pass pipe equals false. So that hopefully should be enough uh, to update the score. So let's just make sure that's working. I'll say print score and I'll run the game. Whoops, what have we done here? Uh, pass pipe is false. Ah, I forgot an equals sign. Try that again. Okay, so it's zero and as long as I don't mess this up, there we go, shoots up, goes up by one, uh, didn't make the second one, but anyway, it, it's working. Um, I don't actually have a way of displaying on us on, onto the screen though, at the moment it's just spitting this out into the, uh, down here, just within the terminal. So to be able to display text onto the screen, I need to be able to add some kind of functionality for this. Point game doesn't automatically have a way of showing text onto the screen. So to be able to do that, you need to first convert text into an image and then blit that image onto the screen, just in the same way as I've done with the rest of the pictures. So to do that, I'll create a function because it will avoid me having to constantly type out uh, this conversion. So I'll just come up here before I've defined my classes and I will define a new function, which will be draw underscore text. And this is gonna take a few arguments. The first one is the text that I actually want to display on the screen. Then the font, so I need to actually define a font for this, a text color, and then an X and a Y coordinate for this text. So like I said, the first thing is to convert to an image. So we say image equals, and then we use this function here, font.render, which essentially uses the font that I'm gonna supply, which is this one here, and then it's gonna render that font into an image. So whatever I put in this bracket is going to be converted. First of all, I wanna say text. So the text that I'm gonna put in is what I wanna turn into that image and then I need to give it a text color. So lastly, once the image is created, I need to put it onto the screen. So for this, again, it's just the blit function. So screen, which is my game window, dot blit, I choose the image, and then I give it an X and a Y coordinate for showing it up. So that's fine, I've created the function, but you notice there's a couple of things that I've called here that I haven't actually defined yet. One of them is the text color, and the other is my font. So let's just come up here, uh, where am I gonna add this? Just above my game variables, I'll define my font. Let's say define font. And I say my font equals, so for this you use pygame.font.sys font. And in, in here I need to define the font I actually want to use. So you can use pretty much anything you want, but for my game I've decided to use this one that I just thought looks kind of good for it. As long as I spelled that correctly, Bauhaus 93. And I want this to be pretty big, so I'm going to go with a size of 60. So fonts defined, let's also define color. And this one is just going to be white, which is 255, 255, and 255. So that's it. That's created and all set up. That means I've got everything I need to be able to actually call this function within the game loop. So if I come all the way back down here, underneath the score, so previously in here I just typed print score. Well, now I don't need to do that. I can say draw text, which is my new function I just created. And in here, I can put the score in. But of course, score at the moment 
uh, is an integer, and this function is going to take a string. So I need to convert that score to a string first of all. So we convert it, then I supply the font. Uh, next it was the color, which is white, and I need to give it an X and Y coordinate. So for the X coordinate, uh, I just want it to be pretty much in the middle of the screen. So let's say integer screen width by two. And for the Y coordinate, uh, just drop it down from the screen a little bit, so 20. So if I've put everything in correctly, if I run this code, there we go. I've got a score of zero at the top. And if I can manage to just get through these pipes, go one, two, and there we go. Score counter is updating nicely. I don't have anything in it to reset at the moment. So stuck at four, the game stops. I don't have a way of resetting, uh, but I'm gonna code that in in the future. So for now, this is everything for this tutorial. If you found this video useful, then please do leave a like. And if you'd like to stay up to date with these tutorials, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.